So friends, uh, I guess we are having this PC first time in Mumbai. So let me first of all thank you for this warm reception and uh, we look forward to very candid open questions in this session. See, Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji gave us a clear mandate that India's telecom sector has to be reformed. It has to be globally benchmarked. It's a global industry. It's an industry which is I, I mean equal if you go to any part of the world so it has to be globally benchmarked and the whole regulatory setup has to become a benchmark for the world so we started this entire reform journey you are you are aware that the first reform was done on the OSP so that I mean that enabled during the COVID period a lot of work from home then in last September we had a reform of uh, various structural and procedural reforms were there. Then after that we had a series of WPC reforms. Then during the 5G we had another very big uh, during the 5G auction cabinet approval another very big reform for having non-public networks and opening up uh, spectrum leasing. So all those reforms have happened and now we are at a stage where the industry has come out of a very painful legacy period where lots and lots of court battles were there, lots of legal, lots of other issues were there. Industry has more or less come out of that and is at a stage where it becomes a sunrise industry, a growth phase it can enter, a new cycle of capital investment can enter and industry is now looking at going to the far-flung areas, spreading the service, improving the quality, lot many things then in the recent times we have also approved a large package of a lakh and 65,000 crore for uh, reviving BSNL, MTNL and again these are steps which are uh, part of a very well thought out strategy in which the first goal is to make sure that each and every person in the country gets good digital service because we believe in inclusive growth. We are a government which really, really works towards inclusiveness, towards inclusive growth, towards making sure that benefits of development are basically available to every part of the country. So that is the first goal. Second goal is to make sure that the, the whole sector which was having serious weaknesses becomes strong so that the focus now comes on quality of service. We have, we have service, but where is the quality of service? That, become, that should become the next round of focus. Third, we have to develop a complete ecosystem of telecom sector where telecom equipment, design, development, manufacturing, the uh, entire software solution for the core network, for the radio network, having end-to-end -end 4G and 5G technology stack, being part of the global um, standards industry, I mean setting the standards so that our IP rights are, uh, are recognized all over the world. So with that thought process we are working in a very very methodical way and uh, the sign of all these things uh, uh, showing results, I can give two points. One pointer is telecom tower approval which used to take sometimes more than a year is now happening in few minutes close to 75% of all permissions for telecom tower happens within few minutes. Just about 25% will take a few days because there will be some airport or some other establishment near it. Second, the, uh, right now the 5G auction which is going on, that shows that the industry now wants to expand. It has come out of the problems, now it is wanting to get into a new growth phase and that growth phase is not just a new technology but simultaneously taking that technology and those advantages to the entire country that's the thought process which is currently driving the auction and the results are very good we are I think in the fourth day of the auction and close to 1,49,966 crore has been uh, committed by the industry for buying a spectrum so this shows how the sector is maturing in a very nice fashion. I'll uh, stop here and then we can have questions. During the questions, I'll uh, cover more points. 
how many of, uh, uh, how many of you were present in the presentation session okay so then you would have got a good idea of what we are thinking right some okay. of them attended the morning sessions also sir oh very good excellent yeah uh, we can open we can open with mr arun uh, from india today yeah There are four questions in your question. I'll address all the four. No, 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 no absolutely. I'm here to answer your question. So uh, I'll address all the four. First question is about whether the reserve price reduction was enough. I think we should look at it in a very holistic manner. The way to look at it is one on the one hand we reduce the reserve price, on the other hand, we also remove the SUC. The reduction was significant. One. Second, the payment terms have been changed. There was a huge upfront amount which was required to be paid in the previous uh, auctions whereas here the entire amount can be paid in 20 equal installments at a very nominal interest rate. So that reduces the cash flow burden on the telecom sector and that helps them in focusing more on capital investment so that the reach of the network increases rather than they currently focusing on how to pay to the government right so that balance has been brought in the third point about that entire thing is that the uh, bank guarantee which was a very significant cost element and a balance sheet burden that has been done away with so the players who are participating in the auction are very well established players so earlier there was a financial bank guarantee to be uh, submitted and that used to be a huge amount and when you look at it from the bankers and companies perspective the bankers and companies basically look that as a liability which is not equal to a loan but not very less than a loan so that that would stress the balance sheet of the companies significantly that has been taken away so without the bg without the suc and with the very liberalized payment terms I think the auction reserve price was a very fair number and it's very clearly visible from the outcome. So that was the first part of your question. Second part, do we have the handsets? Today more than, uh, if you look at the entire handset universe, 5G enabled handset universe, more than almost 30% of the handsets which are manufactured in India and we are, uh, I would like to point that out also. We are today the second largest handset manufacturing country in the world, right? Uh, we have come long way say, in the last eight years and today we are a very large player, very significant player in handset manufacturing. Close to 20% of the handsets are already 5G enabled. Today the entry level 5G handsets have already come at 15,000 rupees and very soon, uh, this is what the industry tells us, it's coming towards uh, 10,000 rupees which is a very critical uh, point in terms of cost of a handset. So that's coming uh, very soon. Third point is how soon are we going to roll out and what is going to be the capital expenditure for the industry. See with the balance sheet cleaning up which happened because of September reforms and with the, uh, with the balance sheet de-stressing steps that we had taken most of the industry is today re ready for getting into a new capex cycle. 
we have discussed with the banks the banks are very much willing to support the industry now for capital investment the industry itself is very confident of going for capital investment and the process that we are following is as soon as the spectrum auction ends within a few days we will allocate the spectrum all this is being done in record time believe you me from the day the cabinet approved the auction process I team, our team has worked day and night and kudos to all the people who have been working on this day and night they have been working and not a single hour has been wasted forget wasting days and that's why the auction has happened so fast and with that same speed we will do in allocating the spectrum getting the agreement signed making sure that the rollout happens our target is that we should start the rollout process sometime in early October this year and it should roll out very fast very rapidly and within coming one one and a half two years we should see a good significant presence of 5G in the country again I would like to point out what are the global practices and the global experience 4G remains a significant part of telecom network even today in all over the world for example, in the whole of US, there are just about 50,000 sites of 5G, even after so many years of 5G, right? The bulk is still 4G. We believe that we will probably buck that trend and we will probably have a much faster rollout of 5G compared to many other geographies because our other costs are significantly under control now. So hopefully we will be having a very good presence and BSNL will also, as a market balancer, BSNL also will roll out its 5G after its 4G. It will be rolling out its 5G very rapidly. So with all these things in place, looking at that complete picture, we think that we are in good position and the results will show as they have shown in the past. The results will uh, speak for the performance. Okay, take this. Yeah, so if you look at the trend emerging from the current. With this mic, you have to give the answer also. <laughs> <laughs> Not just the question. Then you have to give me the designation also. <laughs> <laughs> Minister Emeritus. <laughs> Good. Um, so, um, with, the, with the ongoing auction going on, if you look at the trend that is emerging, it's clearly two operators who are uh, buying the spectrum. It's basically Reliance and Airtel and Vodafone thereabouts. Uh, so, there is a concern that the industry is heading towards a duopoly uh, uh, with Vodafone being thereabouts and BSNL also being thereabouts. So, is that a sort of a, a ideal situation you for you as a minister who, and you have great plans for uh, growing the telecom sector going forward. And the second question I have is, um, the government is going to take 33% stake in Vodafone idea. So what is it that you want to do with it at the end of the day? Both the questions are very good questions. First of all, duopoly will not happen. <laughs> very clearly, competition is maintained. And the September reforms of last year have already resulted in a good stability in the industry. We are now looking at newer interest. We are looking at other players who would like to enter this segment. And today the sector is looking at basically a situation where definitely there is going to be good healthy competition in the sector. BSNL will emerge as a good market balancer. I wouldn't take any other names, but clearly the industry is today stable and the concerns that we had, let's say, some time back, those concerns do not exist anymore. The second part, just remind me the second part. So how? What will you do with those shares? We don't want to be in the board of any company. This is clearly a solution for a stressed industry. The as and when that final transaction happens, uh, the equity which comes to the government will kept in a uh, kept in an entity which doesn't uh, have any day-to-day -day relationship with the management of the company. The company will remain a professionally managed company 
they will they, and as soon as the opportunity comes the government's stakes will once again be brought into the public yeah it will be given to you given to all of you Next question will take from the Hindu. Hi, sir. Uh, I got two questions. You know, Arun said uh, that uh, the industry has to invest around eight, uh, eight lakh crore uh, uh, for for equipment. Out of that, how much the Indian uh, uh, company, which is your thrust and the government thrust, we can uh, uh, get? See, the PLI scheme that we launched for the telecom sector. we got very good response close to 31 companies have got permission under pli close to a lakh crore incremental production is under plan for uh, in these 31 companies looking at that response and today we are seeing people who want to manufacture radios people want to set up the base and complete spectrum people want to complete complete uh, the 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 whole uh, all kinds of equipments in the value chain people are willing to come and manufacture and given our cost structure given our competitiveness on engineering design cost all those things we decided to take one more step we said that we will have design led manufacturing because we want our ip rights to be recognized the value of our brain should be recognized all over the world our engineers whose output should be recognized in terms of the pricing power so that's why we went for a design led manufacturing and there also the response is very good 5th august is when we close the applications for design led manufacturing so we believe that over a period of next 2 to 3 years like our success in electronics manufacturing handsets we will be seeing exactly similar success in telecom equipment manufacturing also a large part of this obviously will be used in the expansion of indian network but we also feel confident that many of these manufacturers will become exporters over a period of time and make their presence felt in the world so my second question about balance sheet deleveraging of all these uh, at least the two uh, big players if i'm knowing numbers are not mistaken vodafone idea has a debt of around 196000 like, uh, crore um airtel uh, has 1 lakh nearly 50000 how that will be addressed you know if there is one sort of debt how can they become a sunrise sector debt has to be always seen in the context of what is the cash flow telecom industry is an industry where the volumes are huge we have 1.2 billion subscribers 120 crore subscribers itna bada subscriber base jab hota hai to even if one paisa becomes multi, one rupee multiplied by 120 crore that is the kind of uh, revenue impact you have on the industry that's why this industry is able to sustain a higher level of debt the uh, issues which were there basically the liabilities which were there on the balance sheets arising out of agr arising out of spectrum issues arising arising out of litigations most of them most of those issues have been already addressed in the last year's reforms and any other balance items we are already uh, we are always willing to willing uh, willing and open to suggestions if something else needs to be done to make the industry more healthy because only a healthy industry can take the services to the far flung areas how many of uh, you in this room are let's say from a very remote part of the country let's say from a village in jharkhand or village in chatisgarh or village in odisha so some relatives and all right uh, parents are there right so if we if we have to reach out to those places then we have to have a very healthy industry so that's why our focus is that we must maintain the health of the industry so hindi mein do sawal hai karna chahenge pehli baat to ye ki jis 5g spectrum ke bare mein baat kar rahe hain to khas taur par agar aam logon ki baat kare to aam logon ko 5g spectrum kab tak uplabdh hoga pehla sawal dusra sawal apni ye kaha ki stress industry kafi hai aur isliye kahin na kahin sarkar bail out package dene ki bhi koshish kar rahi hai through different means does it mean ki jab 5g spectrum ya aam logon ko milega to kya reasonable rates mein hoga what do you expect from it at the end dono questions ekdam specific hai मेरे आंसर्स भी स्पेसिफिक रहेंगे 5G सर्विसेज रोल आउट होनी चाहिए अक्टूबर की बिगनिंग में अभी स्पेक्ट्रम का ऑप्शन चल रहा है स्पेक्ट्रम का ऑप्शन होपफुली 
आगे आने वाले कुछ राउंड्स में आगे आने वाले दो तीन दिन और चले शायद और उसके बाद में तुरंत बाद में स्पेक्ट्रम का एलोकेशन करेंगे कंपनीज को एलोकेशन के बाद में इक्विपमेंट लगाने ट्यून अप करना उनको सब अप करना कंप्लीट राइट नॉर्मली वो प्रोसेस सात आठ महीने दस महीने का होता है लेकिन हमने इंडस्ट्री को पहले से प्राइम अप किया हुआ है पहले से हमने इंडस्ट्री को बोला हुआ है कि जल्दी से काम करो अपने को दौड़ने वाली सरकार है दौड़ना है इसमें काम तेजी से करना है रुकना नहीं है ऐसा नहीं कि आज स्पेक्ट्रम ऑप्शन हुआ और छः महीने के बाद में कुछ बात करेंगे नहीं भाई ऐसे नहीं चलेगा जल्दी से जल्दी काम करने का है सो दैट्स दैट्स उस स्पिरिट के साथ सबके साथ बातचीत की हुई है तो होपफुली अक्टूबर की बिगनिंग में आप लोग सभी ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम देश भर में अक्टूबर से 5G जी सर्विसेज की शुरुआत हो जानी चाहिए इस तरह की प्लानिंग अभी चल रही है फिर जैसे देखो अगर बीच में कोई और प्रॉब्लम आई तो थोड़ा डिले हो सकता है लेकिन कोशिश है अक्टूबर में करने की दूसरा प्राइसिंग प्राइसिंग अगर आप देखो दुनिया भर में ऑन एन एवरेज करीब करीब चौबीस सौ पच्चीस सौ यानी चौबीस सौ पच्चीस पर मंथ टेलीकॉम सर्विसेज की कॉस्ट आती है भारत में वो कॉस्ट है दो सौ रुपये दो सौ से भी कम एक सौ तिहत्तर रुपये एक सौ पचास रुपये ऑन एन एवरेज अगर सब चीज़ों का किसी के दो हज़ार भी आती होगी किसी के बीस रुपये भी तीस रुपये भी है तो एवरेज की बात कर रहा हूँ मैं तो ऑलरेडी भारत की भारत में डेटा की कॉस्ट दुनिया में लोएस्ट है ऑलरेडी लोएस्ट है डेटा की कॉस्ट अब फाइव में क्या प्राइसिंग रहेगी ये एक इंडस्ट्री का मैटर है जिसमें गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से हम एक ही चीज़ का ध्यान रखते हैं कि कोई बहुत ज़्यादा ऐसी प्राइसिंग नहीं करें जिससे कि एक साधारण परिवार को बिल्कुल किसी को वो फैसिलिटी वंचित रह जाए उस चीज़ को हम प्रिवेंट करते हैं बाकी मार्केट में प्राइसिंग के ऊपर डिस्कशन मार्केट अपने आप डिसाइड करता है और सबसे बड़ी बात है कि भारत में आज भी डेटा की प्राइस लोएस्ट इन दर्ल्ड है Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, so, my first question is: Are there more reforms on the anvil? Yes. Secondly, uh, 5G auctions will be held on an annual basis. Now, in this auction, we've already netted one and a half lakh crore. So, what can we expect? Right? Already, telcos have cornered a fair chunk of what they would like. Uh, and my third question is on Vodafone idea. Post the conversion of the interest, you have a 33% equity. After four years, what if Vodafone Idea is unable to repay the principal amount? Then you may be forced to convert even that into equity, which means the government will be left with a majority, which will be holding a majority stake in Vodafone Idea. That apart the fact that you know BSNL itself is getting reformed and uh, resurrected in a way. Um, so your thoughts on what happens four years later? Three questions. I wish you would have asked like him <laughs> first, questions. then second, then third. <laughs> so okay. So you are all testing my memory. <laughs> <laughs> okay so first part is do we have more reforms see the journey of reforms started when prime minister announced the atmanirbhar bharat uh, during the uh, the whole concept and the whole thought process lots of sectors have got reformed space sector mining sector uh, electricity has had many reforms many sectors have got serious significant reforms in the telecom sector the first big reform was osp reforms and with the help of those reforms during the pandemic people were able to work from home and it became really easy for people to get a license and make sure that they, there are no obstructions in uh, seamlessly transitioning during the covid uh, times and that is continuing then came the structural reforms of uh, september 21 and in those structural reforms lots of legacy issues were resolved the whole agr mess was cleared up so many things were done and that really helped after that we took a series of procedural reforms and some structural reforms in the wireless promotion and coordination wing so wireless wing is the spectrum managing wing of the government all over the world they have a similar wireless wing every country in the world will have a wireless management wing so we took close to about 17 or 18 reforms in that that particular wing so the result is आज की तारीख में अगर आप देखो तो प्रैक्टिकली कोई भी लाइसेंस एक महीने से ज़्यादा नहीं लगता जो तीन साल कई बार दो साल ढाई साल लगता था नाउ दैट इज़ कम डाउन टू लेस देन अ मंथ प्रैक्टिकली फ्यू डेज इज द नॉम एंड एवरीथिंग इज ऑनलाइन राइट 
कोई किसी भी चीज़ में टाइम नहीं लगता इसमें देन केम इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर रिलेटेड रिफॉर्म्स आर डब्ल्यू के लिए वी मेड अ पोर्टल दिस हैपेंड इन फेबररी ऑफ दिस मंथ फेबररी मार्च ऑफ दिस ईयर सॉरी फेबररी मार्च में हम लोगों ने आर डब्ल्यू का एक पोर्टल बनाया इन विच ऑल द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स वन बाई वन दे ज्वाइंट इनिशियली सेवनटीन एटीन स्टेट्स ज्वाइंट देन दैट नंबर वेंट अप टू ट्वेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी सिक्स टूडे आई बिलीव प्रैक्टिकली ऑल द स्टेट्स हैव ज्वाइन सो आज आर ओ डब्ल्यू परमिशन लेना राइट ऑफ वे का परमिशन लेना हैज़ बिकम वेरी ईजी वेरी वेरी ईजी एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द परमिशन आर ऑलरेडी डन टावर का मैंने आपको एग्जाम्पल दिया टू एंड हाफ लैख टावर परमिशन गिवन थिंग्स विच यूज टू टेक अ ईयर मोर देन अ ईयर आर नाउ गेटिंग डन इन फ्यू मिनट्स और फ्यू डेज ईजिली डेफिनेटली विद इन विद इन अ फ्यू डेज तो वो जो रिफॉर्म हुआ उससे इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर को आगे ले जाने में बहुत बड़ा फायदा हुआ तो ओ एस पी रिफॉर्म्स स्ट्रक्चरल रिफॉर्म्स डब्ल्यू पी सी रिफॉर्म्स इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर रिफॉर्म्स नाउ वॉट नेक्स्ट राइट नेक्स्ट इज चेंजिंग द एंटायर लीगल स्ट्रक्चर वी आर स्टिल गवर्न बाय थ्री लॉज एक लॉ है एटीन एटी फाइव की एटीन एटी फाइव इमेजिन नाइनटीन थर्टी थ्री की दूसरी लॉ है तीसरी लॉ है नाइनटीन फिफ्टी की तो प्राइम मिनिस्टर साहब ने अब तक करीब करीब पंद्रह सौ फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड लॉज ऐसी एंटीक्वेटेड आर के एक लॉज को भारत के स्टैचुट बुक से कानून से हटा चुके हैं अब टारगेट लिया है टेलीकॉम के इन तीनों लॉज को हमको क्लीन अप करके रखना है and we have to make sure that these law the 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 law that we make should be seamless in terms of aaj ki industry ko kahin par bhi disruption nahi hona chahiye very clearly focused towards the future kyunki industry mein tezi se cycle change hoti hai to aisi tej changing industry mein law should not become a barrier in industry's growth it should become an enabler it should not become a बैरियर इट शुड नॉट बिकम अ ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन वो सेकेंड पॉइंट थर्ड जो इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर का पॉइंट है आर ओ डब्ल्यू जैसे अभी आपने कई सजेशन सुने होंगे जो आप मीटिंग में थे कई लोगों को का कहना है कि आपके लेवल पर तो सॉल्व हो गई भारत सरकार के लेवल पर सॉल्व हो गई लेकिन अभी भी पंचायत में म्यूनसिपैलिटी में हमको दिक्कत आती है अगर कोई टावर की परमिशन लेनी है अगर कोई राइट ऑफ वे लेना है तो उसमें पंचायत और म्यूनसिपैलिटी के लेवल पर अभी भी दिक्कत आती है सो दैट मीन्स वी नीड टू वर्क मोर ऑन दैट उसके ऊपर भी हमको उसमें लॉ में लाना पड़ेगा फोर्थ स्पेक्ट्रम एज अ रिसोर्स इसका कोई लीगल कंस्ट्रक्ट अभी नहीं है स्पेक्ट्रम मैनेजमेंट कैसे हो मान लो किसी एक प्लेयर के पास एक बैंड में कुछ स्पेक्ट्रम यहाँ पर है और कुछ स्पेक्ट्रम यहाँ पे है तो डज इट डजेंट इट मेक सेंस कि आप दोनों को एक साथ रखो दोनों चंक्स को एक साथ रखो सो दैट द स्पेक्ट्रम कैन बी यूज मोर ऑप्टिमली मोर इफेक्टिवली ऐसा होना चाहिए मान लो आपने कोई स्पेक्ट्रम 4G टेक्नोलॉजी के लिए लिया है अब आप उसी स्पेक्ट्रम में 5G यूज़ करना चाहिए तो स्पेक्ट्रम एक रिसोर्स है जिसमें टेक्नोलॉजी न्यूट्रल फॉर्म में उसका यूटिलाइजेशन होना चाहिए मान लो आप री फार्मिंग करना चाहते हो राइट right? मान लो आप हार्मोनाइजेशन करना चाहते हो मान लो आप स्पेक्ट्रम को किसी को लीज पर देना चाहते हो ऑल दो थिंग शुड बी अलाउड इन द लीगल स्ट्रक्चर अभी क्या है अभी कोई कोर्ट ऑर्डर पर चलता है कोई गवर्नमेंट का ओ एम चलता है it is a system which certainly needs to be properly reformed properly structured jisse ki industry mein ek certainty aaye ye chautha panchwa point chhatha point humko jo insolvent ho gayi companies aisi situation mein we must make sure that our public policy is looking at continuity of service kal ko koi bhi company किसी भी कारण से अगर ऐसी स्ट्रेस वाली सिचुएशन में आती है तो पब्लिक को नुकसान नहीं होना चाहिए अगर किसी के पास एक्स कंपनी का किसी भी एक पर्टिकुलर कंपनी की सर्विस है तो वो सर्विस कैसे कंटिन्यू हो वैसा सोचना चाहिए राइट इस तरह की बातें फिर किस तरह से ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा प्रॉब्लम्स में हम फाइनेंशियल पेनल्टी लगा लें कंपाउंडिंग की फैसिलिटी होनी चाहिए अपनी तरफ से कोई गलती करे तो बता दे अपनी तरफ से पहले कि भाई मेरे से ये गलती हो गई इतनी फाइन ले लो और उसको क्रिमिनल केस की तरफ नहीं ले जाना चाहिए एक ये जो दुनिया भर में थॉट प्रोसेस है उस थॉट प्रोसेस को भारत में भी लाने की ज़रूरत है कि भाई अगर सपोज मैं एक कंपनी हूँ मेरे से कोई गलती हो गई कहीं पर राइट तो गए सरकार के पास और बातचीत कर भाई ये गलती हो गई इसकी ये पेनल्टी भरे और आगे निकले राइट इस तरह की थाट प्रोसेस से एक टोटली मॉडर्न लॉ बनाना है 
बिकॉज प्राइम मिनिस्टर साहब ने हमको क्या टारगेट दिया है पी साहब ने टारगेट दिया है कि दुनिया भर के देश भारत में आके भारत की लॉ को स्टडी करें और उसको कॉपी करें ऐसी लॉ आपको बनानी ये नहीं कि हम दुनिया भर में जा जा के स्टडी करते हैं हमें अपना लीगल स्ट्रक्चर ग्लोबल बेंचमार्क के तौर पे बनाना है क्योंकि ये ग्लोबल इंडस्ट्री है दिस इज़ नॉट एन इंडस्ट्री विच इज़ आइसोलेटेड इन अ पर्टिकुलर कंट्री राइट इस ग्लोबल इंडस्ट्री में हमें ऐसा स्ट्रक्चर बनाना है सो दिस इज़ अ लॉन्ग आंसर टू योर फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन and uh, second and third you have to remind third i remember second i don't remember please repeat uh, the second one is uh, what can we expect from the next auction because it will be one year down the line uh, see the um, auction calendar is very important because we need certainty among the industry aisa nahi hona chahiye ki koi soche ki pata nahi auction kab aayega should i start my investment cycle should i not start my investment cycle wo sab jo माइंड में थॉट प्रोसेस में आता है अनसर्टेंटी आती है अनसर्टेंटी इज अ बिग हिंड्रेंस टूवर्ड्स ग्रोथ सो अनसर्टेंटी को रिमूव करने के लिए ऑप्शन कैलेंडर बना रहे हैं एवरी ईयर ऑप्शन विल हैपन जिसकी जितनी जरूरत होगी उतना लेगा सरेंडर करे जरूरत जितनी हो ले वी 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 डोंट वॉन्ट टू कीप अ वेरी हार्ड एंड फास्ट टारगेट ऑन दीज थिंग्स राइट इसमें एज पर द रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ द इंडस्ट्री इट शुड हैपन योर थर्ड क्वेश्चन वॉज अबाउट वोडाफोन आइडिया we believe that there will be good fresh investment more investment coming in uh, vil and uh, looking at the current prospects and the growth prospects the very fact that they are participating in 5g also shows that yes the company has come out of the difficult times and it should remain as a good viable entity and should get into a growth path going forward is our understanding and we don't see a scenario jo aap bata rahe that kind of scenario we don't really see we do believe that yes this will be a growth phase for the entire industry and all the players in the industry will see good growth in the coming days uh, so may i ask one more he is the boss yeah yeah perfect okay uh, so you said that uh, you want to change the current laws so that they are not a barrier in what way are the old antiquated laws Uh, acting as a barrier in today's scenario and just one more word on the cnpn license and allocation you said the dot is con- uh, conducting demand studies what is the timeline when can we expect allocation so the first part is see a legal structure should be in tune with times any legal structure should be in tune with times the times that we are in are the times when technology is changing very fast a fast changing technology and an industry in which the things change in quarters not in years not in decades that kind of industry needs a very stable very f- uh, forward looking very futuristic very digital born digital kind of a uh, law which is born digital that kind of thought process that that kind of structure is needed that is what will spur the next round of growth that's what i mean when i say that we want we, we would uh create a legal structure and i i request all of you and also to the listeners and viewers that please give your suggestions download the consultation paper which has been uploaded it's a very uh detailed consultation paper which has been uploaded please give your suggestions we are we have set up a large team to look into each and every word that comes as a suggestion from the all the stakeholders the manufacturers the service providers the users the public policy experts the journalist community everybody please give your suggestions we will seriously look at your suggestions and then formulate the law the target will be that uh, we should be able to take it in next year's monsoon session because after the consultation is done we will be preparing a draft law that draft act we will publish and then once again invite your suggestions on the draft act once the suggestions on the draft act are analyzed and incorporated then we will be publishing a final bill, final draft bill and based on those uh, uh, and further suggestions on that final draft bill we'll take it to the cabinet and once the cabinet approves then we'll take it to the parliament so we are looking at a time frame of august of next year by which we should have a 
new legal structure. So that's that. So thank you very much. We have a round table. Uh, people thank you very much, sir. I mean, because I mean, Good meeting other meetings are there. And thank you very much for participating in the press conference. And thank thanks you for your time, sir.